G'day guys, I'm in the workshop today with the Jimny. I uh, want to install a set of diff breathers to try and keep some of the water out of the diff and the, uh, the transfer case and gearbox. A lot of people think that once you install a snorkel, your car's waterproof. Um, the fact is water can get in everywhere and we're going to try and prevent some of that today by installing one of these. Let's get into it. This is what most standard breather kits come with. You'll get some air hose, some quick fittings, and the actual filter unit or the breather unit itself. Now, with the Jimny, you'll also need some rubber fuel hose and some hose clamps to make it all work. So the first thing you're gonna to have to do is locate all your breather points. Uh, there's one on top of each diff, there's one on top of the transfer case, and one on top of your gearbox. Now, we're gonna to have to remove all of these silver caps to enable us to put our rubber hose on top. Now these things are quite fiddly to take off, but I found that if you use a flathead screwdriver and just pry them off, it's a lot easier than using pliers. And this is what you're left with once you've taken it off. The inside diameter of the rubber fuel hose is a nice snug fit to the supplied airline, but it doesn't fit over the breather spigot. So to get around this, I had to make an adapter with some flexible tube that just fit over the outside of the rubber fuel line, and this was a perfect size to fit the breather spigot. Now, if you want to save yourself some trips back and forth to the hose supplier, you're best to have an assortment of rubber tubing to make this work. Once the adapter was on there, I ended up putting a bit of heat shrink over the top of it just to give it that extra little bit of rigidity and to firm up the joint. Righto, so now that we've got our adapter made up, it's time to get the air hose into it. I sprayed a little bit of WD-40 in there just to give it a bit of lubrication to, to get it down as deep as possible into the rubber tube. So I was shooting for about 50 to 60 mil of overlap here, or a couple of inches worth. Um, and we'll be putting a hose clamp on it anyway, so it'll be nice and tight by the time we finish. As you can see, this is quite a tight fit here, and that's what you want. You don't want it coming, coming loose on a track somewhere. Now, when you're putting on hose clamps, you want to make sure you thread them on before you've actually attached everything together, because that could mean having to take everything apart again just to put on a, a hose clamp. Um, the other thing to keep an eye out for here is not to over tighten, because you don't want to crush the air hose. Now that everything's nice and secure, it's time to put the whole thing on top of the breather spigot. It's pretty simple, just slide it on over the top and do up the hose clamp, make sure it's nice and snug. So once you've done this step, all you need to do is run the hose up and into the engine bay or wherever you want to install your filter uh, and just make sure you keep it away from any um, hot parts or any pinch points. So the spigot that's on top of the transfer case is quite close to the underside of the car and it's a different size diameter. So I found if you get a couple of the fittings and one of the right angle fittings that come in your diff breather kit and just thread them into the hose itself, uh, that will make a nice tight fit and will fit the different size spigot. And once you get a hose clamp on there, it's rock solid, it won't go anywhere. The gearbox breather is the easiest to install. Just remove the existing cap and slide your hose in with a hose clamp. Now when you run your hose, make sure you leave enough slack so that when your car suspension flexes, 
it doesn't rip any hoses out of place. All right, guys, now here comes the scary bit. You're going to have to drill a hole in your car. Uh, make sure when you mark out the position of the filter that everything still works. It's not going to get in the way of anything. Uh, your bonnet can come down without hitting it, and your hoses are going to be able to get into the bottom of the breather. I used three stainless steel tech screws to hold it to the car, and that seems to work quite well. Now, before you actually secure the unit to the car permanently, you want to make sure that you've installed all the adapters on the underside and give them a bit of a nip up with a spanner. Now, in this particular position, I'll put the breather. The hoses weren't that easy to get in. Uh, it took me a good 15 minutes of mucking around to try and squeeze them all in there, but they did get in there eventually and they're nice and tight and they're out of the way of everything. And one of the reasons I went for this particular diff breather itself is because I really liked the way it was built. Um, it was made out of machined alloy and it's got all stainless steel fittings. It's, it's really quite well made and you can remove the lid to get to the filter. And as you can see here, it's got a nice rubber seal on there so no water is going to get in and you can pull out the filter and give it a good clean or replace it if you need to hey guys that was a bit of an overview of how i did the installation on the jimny now since then i've done about 3000 k's of driving and a couple of days of pretty tough off-roading and everything's held up perfectly now i've got a link in the description below for anyone interested in the exact breather kit that i put in in this car now I would really love any feedback on these videos, good or bad, don't hold back. I'd love to know what you guys are thinking, so comment below. And don't forget to like and subscribe, I really appreciate it. Chat to you later. Cheers guys.